Some say that he refuses to look up or down because he treats all demons with equal disdain, and that he runs at 50 miles an hour through means that some believe is unnatural. All we know is that he's called Doom Guy, and this time he's dropped into the Strog stronghold and is ready to begin cleanup duty on Isle 3. However, the Doom Guy has some principles that he doesn't break. His mighty quads allow him to run 100 meters in 4.47 seconds, but he refuses to jump. This is to give the demons a chance. His traps are so overdeveloped that if he looked up or down it would cause an earthquake through sheer force of will. He will not crouch, standing to attention at all times, refusing to stoop to the demonic horde. And we play on hard, the gentleman's way to play. No combat quick saves either. So, is it possible to complete Quake 2 as Doom Guy? Let's find out. So the story in Quake 2 is that the Strog have been attacking Earth and Who cares about the story? Let's get to some rooting tooting mecha abomination shooting. Side note, this is the console commander used to stop looking up or down. I also unmapped the jump and crouch button, so any other action linked to that is also impossible. And in the very first room, with our very first shot, we have a problem. We can't shoot barrels without some sort of ramp. In the outer base we start off by heading through here to get the shotgun, except we can't. We need to duck under here. So we just have our trusty blaster for the time being, also all of the secrets are off limit here, as we need to duck under here, shoot up at this, or swim up here which we're unable to do. Great start. We come up against the most common grunts. They're armless and attack as a group. Annoyingly, they'll duck out of the way of head height slow moving projectiles. Also, these muscle bound baldies can be a nuisance, especially when left unchecked. Their chain gun can tear through your health if you're not careful. But for now, in this outside area, there's some armor we can pick up. Then run through the final room, grab all the ammo you can and dart for the elevator down to the next part of the unit. There are five armed blaster boys that show up, and a couple more overhead. Keep moving and repeatedly dink them from the elevator. Ignore the shots fired from above and push forwards. Run into the next room and grab the machine gun. Oh yes, a big upgrade. Tear through the rest of the helmet clad lads downstairs and follow the level through to the outside world. Before you get a chance to touch grass, take out the blasting fools in your way. Now in the water, there is a secret. One we can actually obtain. Shoot this wall and grab the shotgun. Yes, your eyes don't deceive you. It does appear as if I jumped, but you can see here that the jump key is unmapped. So what happened? Well, when you're in water and you run up to a waist high wall, Doom Guy will just get up there as if it's a big step. The jump button wasn't pressed, so I'll allow it. Regardless, we now have a shotgun. Move through to the sewers. Ice the two onlookers and jump in the big hole. No, not that one. Falling into this water's a soft lock. We have no way to ascend within water without a platform, so restart, make our way all the way back and yes. This time we fall into the correct hole. Right at the start there's yet another underwater section, one that leads to a secret. But again, we can't use it, as we proceed to shuffle off our mortal coil by way of oxygen deprivation. In the next room, they are there. An absolute scourge. One of the most vicious and cruel encounters. Parasites. Hard to hit as they're short enough to duck under lots of our attacks. The shotgun can just about hit them, with a few pellets doing minimal damage. And even then it's only from mid-range. They can do a lot of sustained damage and sap all of your well-earned health points. So get door fighting and try not to aggro the second in the room. We don't need double the headache. On the above walkway is a quad damage. I want it. I need it, but we currently have no way to get up there, so bear it in mind for later. Head through to the next room and we meet our first gunner. A bit of a tank who fires exploding protein shakers at us. If that isn't enough, he has a good deal of health and the added benefit of a chain gun. Resolution? Shotgun. Repeatedly. In this next room we can interrupt the Jason Statham wannabe before he can pull the alarm. Head up the elevator? Now. Be very careful at this corner. There's a group with bad intentions ahead. What's worse, if you run forwards to meet them, a wall explodes behind you revealing those stupid, awful, parasitic <laughs> So instead of committing Sudoku via the pink tubes, hug the back wall and blast away everything ahead. Then trigger the wall to drop and bob in and out of cover with a shotgun at the ready to deal with the myxomatosis infected doggies. Nab the blue key, fighting your way back to the courtyard and well, 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 what do we have here? Flyers, as annoying as you'd expect. Fortunately, by backpedalling, they often drift to eye level, setting themselves up for a lovely shotgun salvo. Push through until the next loading screen and what's this? 
our first lot of grenades we can pick up. It's time to put them to good use. There's a suspicious game logo that requires our attention. We start off with 83 health points and... Oof, that's a lot of damage for a direct grenade jump. 54 damage taken? Well, it's worth it. Grab some medkits and head back through again. Now we're on the opposite side of the bridge from before the sewer level and are greeted by a gaggle of gunbots. Lure them up one at a time and finish them off. Push your way through the complex until you reach this underground bit in the room with yet another crud damage and have a look around until... It's beautiful. A crescendo of wanton destruction. Two barrels, both with bad intentions. The snick click of its pump action form becomes somewhat of a religious experience. This is the super shotgun. A genital measuring stick so effective that everyone within a 10 metre radius is automatically weak at the knees. Let's go. <laughs> Into the bunker. Now this level is a pain. Initially it's not so bad, but we do come up against these hovering vending machines. Nothing that can't be erased by the majesty of the super shotgun. And after some chicanery dancing to avoid the two chaps just overhead enough to be out of the way of the gun spread, we can drop down and get jumped by two berserkers. Now in this enhanced port, you can't hide. They will find you, and they will jump across the whole map with the sole intention of mollywhopping you. But that isn't our biggest issue here. We need to shoot this switch to release this force field. That isn't really a possibility. Editing Sarando here. So as I was going to grab some extra footage, just to show that you can't shoot the switch from down here, I then realised there's a big set of stairs in the room. And yes, you can shoot it from here. Anyway, back to the regular programming. So instead, throw a grenade, hop up on the box. Now we can shoot that force field switch, press the other two, Nab the secret guarded by Baldilocks and head through the hole. There are a couple of hoppity flyboys who'll launch themselves at you. There is actually a strategy you can use on them quite regularly. Anyone who's played Doom 2 will know what I'm about to say. Treat them like revenants. You can keep them in a dead zone where they won't attack or jump at you. Approach, shotgun, retreat, repeat. And in this next room there's just more of them. Both levels can be a bit of a bloodbath. It's easy to get pincered and skewered from both sides by the homing high jumpers. Take out the sentries on either side of this door, cross the lava pit. Do not get distracted by the guy doing a superhero landing. After he's decommissioned, drop under the platform and get the chain gun. Oh yes, never before has there been such an efficient way to sling so much lead with reckless abandon. Perfect for those squeaky bum times. Also, press this switch, drop off and... Well, let's restart. So, after heading back, we're now in this room. Take everyone out and... We need to figure out how to get up here. We can just about get onto the first box from running straight off the side, and maybe we can use a grenade to hop up, but there's nowhere to throw it to bounce near us. Instead, we can grenade jump by lining up like this and running over it, blowing us directly into the control room. Okay, real talk. I have to talk about quick saves. There's a reason why I specifically said no combat quick saves. Because some of the platforming we have to do, it's mildly ridiculous. So the way I ruled it is, I can quick save to help with platforming, but if I die after that point, I need to restart the level. I can't just go back to the quick save. Because trying to do the platforming, it ended up taking on average 10 to 20 tries for each grenade jump. And that's once I'd figured out if it would even work. And with some of those sections requiring multiple grenade jumps one after another, if I made a mistake and lose 50 health, that's it. I just need to restart the whole level again. Anyway, so after that, run back around, get some health because we need to again grenade jump over onto the back wall. Then we can run over this box here and there is just enough height on it to let us cross onto the next platform. So after we've exploded ourselves twice to get here, as you may expect, health is looking a little low. But it's fine. It's not as if in the next room we need to hit a switch and slowly ride an elevator up whilst people overhead are getting free shots onto us, is it? Oh, that's exactly what's going to happen. Brilliant. So after rerunning that whole gauntlet again, we get bodied. So after rerunning that whole gauntlet again, we get eviscerated. So after rerunning that whole gauntlet again, we get through. Head through past the hydraulic hammer bros and it's time to swing into the next level, supply station. I lie here broken and confused, knowing the way forwards but unwilling to move. My head hangs low, sacrilege. Crawling like a dog, I whimper. My principles in pieces. 
the supply station. There's an open secret with a bit of body armor that we can quickly nab, taking care of the knockoff Robocops on the way. Now we have some slightly elevated goons. Brilliant. Luckily, we can just about tickle their toes with lead, making the area a bit safer. Clear out the chaps downstairs, and now we need to get over here. One grenade jumping session later, and... Now, this room is a touch spicy. Run through and keep moving. There are stormtroopers ahead that can't judge movement at all. So, just keep blasting and you can polish them off. When you head up the ramp, you can swat all of those annoying flies and grab this thing. This is adrenaline. It's very useful. It's a use item that increases your max health by a single point. It also completely fills your health as well. Very useful. Grab this power cube and head out to the railway station. Take out the Tank Abbott fan club and the Tin Can Man over the way and get jibbed. Fabulous. Now we're back here. You can see we have 44 health. Not really enough to make a grenade jump. So heal up and become the Psalms Goblin we always knew we were and leap a small gap. Grab the power cube, hop into the train tracks and climb up here to get the next power cube and this great. We simply can't get through. We need to crouch to progress. I tried everything I thought. I tried to blow myself out with a grenade. I even tried unlocking all of the weapons in the game. Maybe I could get through with a rocket launcher, but nothing worked. It looks like there's no way through. Okay, let's rewind. What are we actually doing here? We're getting these power cores to place in the next level. And what do they activate? Well, technically, we only need three of them. One to power up a computer, and the others to open some doors. But really, we need them to activate these large elevators to get up and progress the level. But these can be skipped. If you can get up high enough, you can make it. How you ask? Well, it turns out that quad damage multiplies both damage and knockback. Meaning that you can quite happily rocket jump up here with a quad damage active. But we don't have, and can't get, a rocket launcher at this point. Nor can we look down to shoot it. And for that, I say, the grenades will do just fine. Well, actually, this works. On easy. But, well, on hard? We just die. With jacket armour and 100 health. We die. With combat armour and 100 health. We die. With mega armour and 100 health. We live! But there's no way to get that armour yet. What about 200 health? We die. 200 health and jacket armour? You guessed it. We die. 200 health and combat armour? We survive, but we also need to be able to do this again. But to even get 200 health, we need to have maxed health, pick up a mega health, let it tick down precisely zero, and then get here. Which is impossible. Mostly because there are no mega healths we can get. And even worse again, to even get to this point, if we grab the three power cubes we can and move backwards, trying to backtrack to go to this elevator, we're blocked by this door. So regardless, it it's just not doable. Hang on, Doom Guy, what are you doing? And well, I suppose that solves that impossibility. If anyone knows a way to get around this, please let me know in the comments below. Traipsing through a crate maze, looping around and open a path back to the start of the level, grabbing the power cores on the way. Run up and plonk them in their respective receptacle. Head up to the big lifts and keep running. Tear through the cold metal corridors and do not get ambushed by the liquor under the stairs. Use the super shotgun, reload, and use again, and again, and again. And yet again, and yet again, ten shells, and one little doggy with a stretch arm strong lipstick. And now down the lift. No, 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 run away. Let's try a different strategy. Drop the lift and sling some explosives down the shaft. I really would like to avoid the flesh slinging siblings. And after going back down, it was fairly ineffective. So let's treat problems with shotgun. Blaze through the warehouse, activate this lift and... Hmm, I see you hidden there. Get a grenade off and take him out. And what? You were behind me as well. Once he's got his slurp on, you can remove the pustule with a lead lobotomy. Next up, more tendril tossing terriers. Make them into mincemeat and power up the crane. It drops a crate that is again too short for us to use a blaster to blow up. Unless we drop down here to shoot it. An arm cannon wielding maniac will pop out. Try not to get toasted. Take the spiral staircase and... Oh god! What is this exploding out of the wall like the Kool-Aid mascot of death? That, my friends, is a tank. 
A carcass corrupted into a medley of machine and metal. Blasters, machine guns and rocket launchers. The full complement of bad news. Get in, empty all the lead and get out. This next room is also bad news. The foes at a distance are a pain to hit with our minute arsenal. We'll just have to shotgun them all from afar. And it's looking a little spicy. Sat here on 3 HP. We need to cross this room, which is a bit awkward. But you can walk onto the platforms and walk across into the next room. Fortunately, there's only a singular skinhead in the next room. Take him out and exit through the conveyor belt. Unit 3. This is where the game starts to throw some more environmental hazards at us. And a lot more swimming sections. The swimming in particular seems to be a non-starter as we have no way to ascend. However, you can often run at the angled walls nearby to get high enough to get out of the swimming pool. And the enemy selection also starts to drastically increase, throwing multiple different types at us at once, with the flyers and berserkers all coming to use us as target practice. We get to this room that turns on some lasers. Let's see, are they alarm lasers or... Yeah, death lasers. Fun. It's difficult to find the right angle, but you can use a grenade jump over here like this. And pushing forwards... Ah, righto. It's like that, is it? So after restarting and getting back, and being a little more strategic and carefully taking everyone out, we're met with this courtyard. The thumb manning the gun, just ignore him. You will not be able to hit him. Just circle strafe and push through. Take out all of the Krang drones and you'll see this fella. He is a gladiator. Ignore that he moves around like a pensioner with a double knee replacement, but the man has a shoulder-mounted railgun, and that most definitely smarts. Pop out at the wrong time and you'll take a lot of damage. Fight your way up the stairs and set off the large cannon to take out a small single bit of wall. Now being in the jail unit, we finally come across the prisoners. Their railgun toting screws milling about the place, with their human captives just left there, crying for reprieve, wishing for a way out. Doom Guy does not approve of this treatment of his countrymen. Oh, whoops. Also, there is a quad damage nearby, and we already have one, so... Quad damage! After releasing all of the prisoners, there is another tank and this bipedal badneck. This guy is bad news. Really bad news. Doom Guy knows of creatures like this. The Archvile. Although not as hardy as Archviles, still, the ability to resurrect non-jibbed enemies is powerful, and given that we can only jib fallen enemies with the help of a ramp or grenades, when they're in the mix, they become priority. Kill them, and kill them quick. There's a secret we can trigger right here too, one which contains something useful. A power shield and an extra adrenaline. I will take that extra hit point. The next level has some vicious encounters around every corner, and those that occur on the worst place possible. The stairs, a tank, even some of the dire archviles. Even worse, in this room, we can't kill anyone near this door, because the overhead medic will just bring them back. Instead, run past into the next area, take everyone out, nab the keycard and double back. Avoid getting railed and take him out. Downstairs is yet another couple of goodies, a quad damage that we can't get to, and some bandoliers. Now these act as the backpacks from Doom, so all of our max ammo capacity increases. Trundling back through this labyrinthine complex, we can go ahead and grab the grenade launcher, which you would imagine is a big increase to our damage output. Yeah, no. Being unable to look up or down, it doesn't cover a lot of angles that it usually should. It will be very useful with some niche applications, but not all that helpful in combat. Well, except against the big boys. It trashes the tanks because they're tall enough that the grenade arc doesn't make any difference. But rounding the corner, we can wave hello to the Icarus unit. Reminiscent of the flyers, but these are more durable, can't be laid out with a single shotgun volley, are faster and shoot lots. So after that brief entanglement, push through yet more plodding death robots. But hidden around this corner is our first energy weapon, the Hyper Blaster. That big drop afterwards did a lot of damage. Let's try to find some more medkits. Aha! I see one here. Um, wow. This is maybe the silliest softlock so far. Let's reset, and after adventuring through the mechanical hellscape again, we push forwards and stumble across a backpack. Which would be very useful to again increase our ammo capacity, but we can't crouch to get it anyway. And moving up onto this courtyard... What on earth is that? A mutant. A mass of experimental flesh gone pear-shaped, writhing with a look of pained anguish in its eyes. Treat problem with cell therapy. 
take the bogeys down as they try to invade our personal bubble and play a game of door fighting with the runts downstairs. Now let's play a game of how many mutants in the closet? One. Two. Three. Ah, ah, ah. Be mindful of the hyperblaster. A spike trap will open down below. There's a sneaky hatch in the corner to grab the goodies underneath. We get jump scared by yet another flesh abomination who appears to be having some trouble with the coffin shaped doorways. You know, there's something magical about this game. Running out into an area surrounded by low tier ruffians to be eviscerated into a cloud of giblets and gore. It's beautiful. A cacophony of violence kept moving by the driving soundtrack brings a tear to your eye. But there is this Warhammer 40k recheck big chilling up on a platform and our grenade launcher can't hit him from down here. So play peekaboo with the Primark and press the button once it's a pile of scrap. That released a bunch of aerial assailants so we can dip into this cave to force them to move into our crosshair. Run up, sling lead through all of the Strog foot soldiers and grab the pyramid key. Now backtracking through the facility a bunch of the tiny flying saucers have been released. Nothing that we can't deal with by cramming them into a corridor and a couple of choice shotgun blasts. Running through the underground prison we can grab the disc, blast everyone in our way until we can drop down into this hidden passage in one of the cells. And we reach this water path. We can descend slowly but once we get to the end of the pipe we can't get up at all. That puts us in a bit of a pickle. Maybe we can get past without going that way? So I head straight for the pyramid and we can get in but not through the door. Turns out I'm being blind and I've missed a rather obvious path to get back to where I needed. Instead of that water route I should just ignore it. Go here instead and get to our next objective a slightly different way. After crushing this poor lad with an Iron Maiden type thing we can nab his pass. Now heading down to the pyramid it's time to play dodgeball. We dodge, duck, dip, dive and dodge our way through the blue lasers. And now we're in some sort of square section. Two of the Primarchs are here. Nothing a bit of grenade tossing can't fix. But then a door drops and we see the Goliath, the super tank. It has energy armour, a good chunk of health, a rocket launcher, chain gun and it can fling grenades at us. I want nothing to do with any of that malarkey. So now we just need to take this thing out and unit 4. Now just pressing forwards to all these leapfrog lads, nothing major to worry about. Now we're just a little toasty. Let's try again. Really? You're going to fall? Again? Into the lava? Uh, hang on a minute, I'm getting a phone call. Hey, uh, what's up? Right, I get your point. I'm not trying to make you look bad, but, well, you are properly showing me up here. Look, you do your job, and I'll do mine, okay? No, I'm not letting you get that neck surgery you're asking for. You don't need a GoFundMe. You're a fictional character. Mate, you don't even subscribe to my YouTube channel. Sure, I'll get you some multivitamins from Tesco. Love you too. Bye, 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 bye. So, storm the castle, go on a shotgun equipped rampage, and also accidentally open this secret to grab our next big upgrade. The Rocket Launcher! Continue town through the beginning of the mine entrance is a fairly straight shot through and down. All the flying fellas can be lured to areas with low ceilings and they pose little threat to us. Just head through to the upper mines. Now, this place, it's a pain. But not for immediately noticeable reasons. But for a good chunk of time, health is tight. And it's a gauntlet of encounters that are tricky to manage. Even this first room is irritating. You can't drop down to grab the rocket launcher ammo because you'll need to spend a grenade to get back up onto the walkway. And up the lift is a central pit of death, surrounded by blighters that will chip away your health. The adrenaline underneath is useless as it's on top of a crusher that will kill you, so we can't even use it as a mid-gauntlet health boost. The next room has someone who wants to rail you from behind and grenade tossing twonks, as well as a second lot across the crevice when you open the next door. A mutant and some flyboys make their presence known, and yet another pit to fall in that's likely to kill you. This is alongside maybe the cruelest mega health. Look at it, sat there waiting to be picked up, but with no way back across, it's useless. 
Heading down this pathway, we get spit roasted and railed by guys we can't hit because again, slopes are our biggest enemy. And after the exploding corridor and grabbing some morsels of health, we explode. So instead of going the other way from the outside courtyard, we can get more prepared and end up in yet another silly soft lock. Restart. Let's try again, load up, head back and get railed again. So, let's get ready, prepare and wait behind the door. Run through and sling all the lead we have via chain gun therapy. And die. Now this time we make it through by dragging them one at a time towards us and just being very careful. Now moving through to the console to turn on the ventilation system that will open up a path that was blocked earlier. Finally, and it only took an hour to get here. Next is a nice easy level, a bit of respite, plenty of health to go around and everyone's on a level playing field. We just need to run through, activate the drilling area and head to the next stage. Traversing the drilling area we come across these doors and can try to force some infighting, which basically has the same logic as Doom. If an enemy hits another, they'll infight, only if they are different types of enemy. This does happen in Quake, but as the game has a lot less enemies in each individual encounter, you're just less likely to see it. Using these doors as cover from the grenades, we can stop and pop the pair of Juggernaut cosplayers. These two switches can be a pain to hit. You need to rely on the random vertical spread of the shotguns to do the job. Head down to the Underdark, take out a pair of Mary Shelley's personal protectors and fire up the mining laser. It's time to dig straight down, and immediately we're accosted by a pair of combat LucasAid cans. Let's take them out and try one of the hardest bits of platforming. It's time to walk onto moving platforms without seeing where they are. So after actually getting onto the coal collection receptacle, we can shuffle on and proceed to get caught between more roaming iron brew cans and Kingpin post a micron treatment. Pull the lever, get this lovely quad damage and let the laser do its thing. Oh look, a rocket launcher. Me want. Let's try again. Take out the tizer, trek across the tin tankards, treat the torrents tons of lead tic tacs, turn on the tunnelling tool and trick the trampling tractor into traversing towards its target, traipse across the tungsten bridge and take out the troublesome tormentors before trotting through to the next level. Which is a brief jaunt complete with two of the tanky chaps, nothing a grenade launcher can't fix, and a dash to the exit straight for Unit 5. The factory, tis a godless place of suffering and gore. And this first challenge is infuriating. After taking out all of the enemies in the vicinity, we open this trap door, and it drops directly into a pit of water, which we have precisely zero way to get out of. So what can we do? Well, you see there is a ledge. Maybe if we drop down and time a rocket to blast us at the right time, we can send ourselves there. No, it didn't seem to work at all. But on this last attempt, I got stuck higher up. What this is, is me landing on top of one of the barracudas down below. And as we know, he does a little auto hop to get out of the pool when you swim close to an edge. Maybe this is possible. Well, doable, but still a struggle. And after getting in there, dropping down to this foundry type area, draining all the lava, and we have to get up to this pipe. Now being at low health, we need to use our adrenaline and try to find a spot that lets us grenade jump up. Because we're on such a small platform, we don't have much wiggle room to find a setup. But if you very slowly edge back right until the screen starts shaking slightly, signifying you're about to fall off, you can get a grenade wedged here and hop up like that. Brilliant. Head up the ladder and what on earth are they? Brains, that's what. And a truckload of trouble too. They have a tethering attack like the dogs from earlier levels, as well as energy shields that make it far tankier than its HP stat would let on. Kill them quick and stay out of their melee range too. Unlike me, who is bad at video games and now needs to restart the level. But afterwards we can get ourselves some lovely armour from this little secret, and if you drop off this ledge we can just about spy a railgun waiting for us. But of course there is a tiny ledge we need to ascend, so after tossing off one of the grenades, it shoots its fragmented load and we pop up, grab the ability to rail anyone nearby, and stock up on health. Head back to the now drained lava pond, grab that juicy quad damage and... fantastic. Now before we do all of that again, I have a choice. I know I can progress with the level, there's a good chance I can just grenade hop over that gap and skip everything before, but I really want that railgun. 
so it's back through the explosives parkour path we go. And after looping round again, just to make sure it doesn't snipe us, we can pop a and grab a new one, pushing through to the next level. And this level is a combat splooge, and one with unfortunately lots of elevation changes, so we'll need to lure baddies to the same height as us to deal with them. This corridor with the travelator is a nuisance. Overhead's a railgunner just trying to pick you off from afar, but you can make it without getting hit if you dive from cover to cover, then circle strafe him on the top platform. And this next room is just cruel. A door behind which is an explosive expert, as well as a zombie chameleon. What's worse, you can't door fight because of the steps down. So get in there, run around and hope for the best. Pushing through the villainous compound, we get to this area here. Really? A floor with massive holes for grenades to fall through? After a bit of testing, you can get set up like this. Have the grenade land just on the edge. You now just need to time the run and hop the gap. Then get tenderized. Let's try again. This time we can push through, activate all the buttons we need and wind up here. I do not like the look of these platforms. I hope they aren't a recurring platform challenge. You can just about run from one to another and off the side when they all line up correctly. Meaning we can push forwards through and exit this unit. Unit 6, the reactor. We start off and what is that racket? You remember the super tank? Well he's back and apparently just another enemy in the level. Luckily we can dip and dive to either side of him and plant rockets upon his crotch to decommission him. After heading up and grabbing this lovely bit of armour we meet the Iron Maiden. A jiggly lass with a face like a bag of smashed crabs. A rocket launcher and claw attack up close. She can also lead her rockets if you're strafing so you need to be switched on when fighting her. And just behind these barrels is a secret. Head up, take out the combatants here and oh god, what is it? It's Now am I pleased to see you, or have I got a canoe in my pocket? Blasting through the rest of the level with energy weapons galore, we head to the reactor. This immediately pulls a cruel cool trick as we get spit roasted from both sides by grenades and rail gunners, with the intention of using my buttocks as a shish kebab. But nothing that can't be stopped by blind aggression and pushing forwards through their ranks. The next rooms are a pain. Lots of elevation changes, making it difficult to get a shot off on either Little Miss Jiggle Physics or her robotic companion. And the fun doesn't stop when we get the data CD either. Opening a monster closet with more of the ne'er do wells. Keep circling, pull them into a level playing field, and give them a chain gun massage. And it looks like one of the rail gunners gives us a present. Now I'm not one to look a gift horse in the mouth, so it's time for an impromptu. <laughs> Heading through to the reactor proper, we need to head to the cooling facility. The unassuming facade of a water pump house lulled Doom Guy into a false sense of security. Everything was calm, everything was still. Doom Guy was happy, content in his strog murdering endeavours thus far. He was exalted in the bliss that was his mission. It is the quiet before the storm, for he did not know what horrors awaited him. There's only one main way to navigate this hellhole, so smash these two lads up on the walkway as well as the Bionicle brother and push the button. Do not run into the big open archway, there's no point yet. We want as many deep runs into the level as possible. Take out the Heinz Beans cans and head for the stream. Now move to the far end and tool up as much as possible. Follow the stream and hop off on the side here to get another health upgrade. And whilst duking the maidens as you're fighting the river current, take them out one at a time. Head up this lift and take out the berserkers and maidens in your way. Now, I hope you have full health, you are going to need it. You see, we need to get up here, and as the observant among you will have noticed, a complete lack of ramps. So, we can spend a huge amount of time carefully exploding our way onto this big box by using two grenades. But now, up here, that maiden can hit us. Let's track all the way back up. Right, now we have aggro on here, we only have one choice. There's one singular weapon that can pull us out of this hole. We need to use the BFG. With the way the tracers work, if you pull her closer to the edge, you can just about take her out in a single hit. So then, time a grenade to explode as the pump is at its lowest point, shooting us onto the platform. Now, low on health, we can rejuvenate with the adrenaline, run up, 
take out the remaining dominatrix and press the button and we've also got to get on that platform now it's it's impossible even if i try again and get here with over 100 health it's just not doable can't do it i need to be able to tank an additional two explosions just jump and that'd be at least 80 health points So how can I get up here after already using three grenade jumps? It can't be done. Do it! Just jump! I think I have to... Will I have to? The gods of doom have forsaken you, for they are of no aid. This is where you falter. This is where you fail. Hi! And welcome to Strange Hidden Inventive Tech Explorations with Sir Rando. The show where we look at innocuous game design and try to figure out a way of a hole as created by pointless arbitrary challenges. On the docket today, Quake 2, Damage and Armor. Jacket armor absorbs 30% damage, combat armor absorbs 60, and body armor absorbs 80%. Considering we need to accept 5 grenades total, we need this much health. 193 health and 83 points of jacket armor, 110 health with 165 jacket armor or 75 health and 200 body armor. That is a lot and not doable, but fortunately there is another way, something that was skipped over and has been ignored on this journey so far, the power armor. Its mechanics are a little odd, it works like this. It's a toggleable armor that uses cells as a power source, which means less hyperblasting and BFGing, but it's worth the cost. If you take 55 damage from a grenade blast, that gets divided into three. Your health and armor take one third, your cell stockpile takes one third, and the last third disappears. Yep, that's right, you just take 66% damage. Unless of course it's an energy weapon, then your health takes one third and your cells take two thirds. And that concludes Strange Hidden Inventive Tech Explorations with Sir Rando. I'll see you next time. So now quoting the Poet Laureate of 1914, Private S. Baldrick. A short excerpt from his masterworks. Boom, 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 boom. Next up is a couple of big combat arenas. The enemy count is starting to increase again. So just be careful and one retry and grenade jumping platforming again. Now this time we head through, loop all the way back to the very beginning and we can head down this now open door to the next stage. We just need to head even further into the sewage. Damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it. And everything's hunky dory until Starscream shows up and ruins everything. But I spy a backpack. We couldn't get one earlier but now it's within grasp and a bonus to our carrying capacity, especially cells is very handy indeed. This whole sewer section right up until the second pumping station is a blur. Hold down W, keep running and shoot anything that moves. But here it ramps up again. We have a few tricky engagements and we're getting pinted on multiple sides with various enemy types. But we do have enough cells to clear out some of the ambushes and after activating the next pump we can progress. The fights for the blue card are a bit dicey but we're off fairly free due to a mega health that's just lying there ready for the taking. Now after crossing this nukage pit Oh. So, like I said, after grenade jumping this nukage, we have a hot start to the next level. Nothing a BFG can't fix, however. We've looped back to where we were previously, but the Strog have set up defences, and they've laid out our worst enemy at that. Thigh high walls. Take out everyone attacking and progress. It's just a case of sapping cells and ammo, but there's enough health lying around that it shouldn't cause too much of a problem. And now with the cooling towers activated, it's a beeline following the sat-nav to the end of the unit. It's worth hopping up here and getting some armour. Stroll into the obvious boss arena and right on cue, the Hornet. Twin chain guns, a rail gun and a rocket launcher. Top that off with a bucket load of health and vertical mobility. Now you could kite it up and down the two levels here, but that often ends poorly. The alternative however is... Run through, destroy the big gun, and evacuate. Now that's one little fly swatted. We now need to head to the city and destroy a black hole generator. This unit has some spiky areas. It is unfortunately a return of the cybernetic liquors here, meaning there's also a lot of helpless humans wandering around. Let's try to leave them alone. 
Unfortunately, some of the switches do the James Bond trick and toast them for us in some grisly traps. Now we have to activate these two switches, and as you can see, we're a touch light on health. I don't think we'll be able to push through like this, but after a short jaunt through the halls and a minor side of murdering, we have a fraction more health and some armour. That should get us through. Now heading back to the two buttons, what makes this even worse? We also need to grenade jump back over both gaps, meaning after tanking all four grenade hops, we're looking a little worse for wear. Nip up, grab the captain's helmet and dash to its resting place. Rail the ladies on a hen knight and push back through the facility. There's an obvious secret area holding an adrenaline and we can carry on through the halls. There are some skirmishes that lead to squeaky bum time, but nothing too lethal. Nothing stands out until here. Now we have a good chunk of old school platforming. The first half can be sorted by walking at the right time, but here we need to head over and press that switch, and it's too far to walk off to get onto. So we need to time a grenade throw, bounce it off the wall and onto our platform to fling us across. And what does this switch do? Absolutely, more platforming. Head over to the three squares on the right hand side, and now just need to time a grenade as the upper platform falls, while not throwing it in any of the gaps. But you can use this little bit of level geometry to catch it, so time it right and... Nicely done. Now as we navigate the cogwheel, we enter yet another fight with a hornet. And he's a little harder to cheese. The one thing we have on our side is solid cover. So only move out when he's low enough to be hit, and he falls like Icarus. There's a pathway upstairs to pull the lever. This lets us get outside and get some fresh air. It's been a while. But we meet up with a tag team of slow moving iron men. In fact, from this point, the plodding tanks become a basic enemy. This doesn't bode well, because this stage alone has eight of them, and they always come as a pair. So press through, carefully making sure it doesn't go pear-shaped. Pull all the switches, blow up this wall and activate another stupid soft lock. But we have health to spare, so let's hop out of here. Now outdoors, the air smells of sulphur, and we're about to add cordite to that. Run forwards, hold down fire and take out all of the weaklings in the way, grab the airstrike marker and set up the fireworks and relish in a job well done. Unit 8 complete, onto the palace, the Strog's final citadel. The palace. And this is a scorching start. Flyboys, railgunners and a bunch of low level Strog overhead. Just this opening encounter can be a bit tricky. But in the overhead walkway there is a power up, one we haven't managed to get before the invincibility. 30 seconds of god mode. Now I'm not sure if that bodes well or not, but I will take it. Also if you follow the path, there is a switch. This unlocks a secret in the starting room, which is quite nice, but after going over the bridge that inconveniently opens up into a lava pit, we're pushed into a chokehold. And on the other side is... a threesome of roided out rocket lobbers. Brilliant. Even worse, things start to show up and attack us from behind. And even worse than that, some of those attackers are medics who undo all of our good work earlier. And even worse than that, there are more tankies ahead. And so, we're overwhelmed, repeatedly. The thing that makes the tank commanders so difficult is that they need to get up to our level before we can do anything at all. With these long ramps up to us, we don't stand a chance. Even running in with the invincibility and laying out a BFG shot, we run out of invulnerability before clearing them all out. That and every time we step foot in, we need to double back to take out the medics to stop us getting blasted from behind. But this walkway is so awkward. I've repeatedly fallen in, taken massive damage and died. That's it. Let's take out the first tank and the baddies that spawn in behind us, double back for the medics, and then lure them to their doom into the lava. That's a much more efficient use of our armaments. And so, with our new plan, it works out beautifully. So after a short romp through the rest of the outer walls, we come to the lower palace, and we start off with a sneaky overhead ambush. Try not to get bodied and turn everyone into tomato chunks. After dashing through, be careful not to get sideswiped by the brainy bunch in this corner. Beware the commander, unlike me. Fortunately, it's pretty close to the start of the level. I also found out something odd. It appears that many enemies can't run into load zones, so use that to your advantage. The amount of tanks here starts to slow down the pace of play. Just send rockets flying until they're reduced to scrap metal. Now we need to make our way to grab the data spinner. It's a straight shot through a brief. And then shoot the glass and... 
Well, this is embarrassing. We need to grenade our way up this tiny ledge and over this small gap. This also gives us access to a secret with a bunch of lovely goodies. Taking the data disc, the sat-nav wants us to crawl through this vent. So we treat it like Google Maps, ignore its suggestions, and move through the level until it decides to reroute us another way through the level. And now we can re-push through the palace. Get caught up at multiple corners by Eddie Hall's cyborg half-brothers, all three of them. This lets us head through to the upper palace. And honestly, by this point, there isn't much left to do, except rip and tear. Stroll around with a railgun and a rocket launcher to cause havoc. The body count is high, but the sheer amount of armament we've got in our possession lets us lay waste to anyone foolish enough to stand in the way. Reprogram the data disc, blow up this stroggy thing, rocket everyone, head for the escape pod, Unit 9 down, all that's left is the fight for their leader. Let's lay out the Autobots, press these two switches and head up to the Emperor's chambers. There he is, Macron, a gun-faced heathen we will force to capitulate. But after running over the bridge, he teleports away. Huh, not so fast. Press the floor switches without getting cut up by the lasers. Take out the annoying mosquitoes. Grab the quad damage. When we see him again, he's in his Jorg exosuit. A massively bulky and strong defensive system. One that comes equipped with the BFG of its very own. But... Keep moving and his squishy interior will show its ugly mug. Wipe away the black powder residue with repeated rockets. And he's done. Head down to the escape pod and leave as a hero. And that's it. Quake 2 as Doom Guy is complete. Aside from one shoelace problem, it's finished. But where does it stack up against everything else beforehand? It had some tough encounters, and figuring out some of the damage mechanics and enemy AI to move them into our aiming reticle was interesting. Some of the fights had me sweating on a few occasions, but overall, Quake 2 isn't a massively difficult game, specifically when you aren't trying to beat it quickly. So I think this ends up sitting quite happily in I'm Too Young to Die. Thank you to Flying Saucer for helping out with some of the technical side of getting some footage, and thanks to the channel members who are supporting this to make it possible. But most of all, thanks to you. Good night.